and you are very welcome. This is The Beautiful Truth on BreakForNews.com with Finton Don reporting. Thanks for joining me, folks. Good to be here with you. And, uh, you know, I just had to come on air because I need to talk about something that nobody's talking about. And it's about the uh, coup in Turkey. And uh, that's not what I want to talk about. The thing that nobody's talking about that I want to talk about is not the mayhem unleashed on the streets of Turkey, but this person here and why nobody's talking about the fact that Hillary Clinton has just overseen one of the greatest foreign policy operational intelligence operation disasters in the history of the United States. Well, it's the worst disaster for the New World Order since mm, Ukraine, uh, since Syria. And in fact, many of these things linked to each other. You know, where do you think Hillary Clinton was on the night that this was going down in Turkey. She was in a room like this, with guys like these, overseeing the attempted coup in Turkey. That's what she was doing. And it wasn't like this scene here, which is taken from that infamous occasion when uh, allegedly um, Barack Obama and all the rest of the team were involved in taking out bin Laden. Or if not bin Laden, at least a guy dressed up to look pretty like bin Laden. And that'll do it for me. No, this was a real situation that Hillary Clinton was involved in. And it in it ended up with literally a mob on the streets. And it ended up with some terrible scenes in Turkey. And we were onto it quite early. And uh, uh, this is live from breakfornews.com. Military coup underway. Um, took us around about an hour or so to nail it. Kathy first identified Fatula Gulen as a key force behind the coup, according to her sources in Turkey. And uh, a little bit of checking into Gulen showed that the CIA and Gulen had certainly come up with each other. And uh, they had a long past, it turned out, as we dug deeper into it. But what really alerted us within a very short period of checking into it, as I say, about an hour or so, was ties between Clinton and the Gulenist movement. And really, it was at that moment that we uh, began to look at at that this could, in fact, be a U.S. coup. But it was hard to tell because it also looked like a fake coup because the operational aspects of this and and people were posting this on, on the forum and following this. It just didn't add up. It wasn't a proper coup. It didn't succeed for a start. You know, which is usually quite important with a coup, despite the violence, etc. So, as I say, we were on to it pretty early, and very few people talking about what this person was doing on that night. And that's what we're here to discuss. Um, this has been a terrible failure. There's nobody talking about this. You know, in, in the presidential race, they're talking about emails on a server. <laughs> Is Trump talking about this? you got to be kidding. No way, Jose. No. But this is the uh, where the rubber meets the road. And despite all the hoopla going on, you know, about the uh, wonderful Hillary Clinton, uh, the reality is for her and for the New World Order, yet another operational disaster, as I say. So let's take a little look into that and what was going on on that infamous night as uh, Hillary Clinton uh, led this operation. Um, It all started for me back on the 8th of February in this year. And uh, here's a headline from uh, Russia Today. Me or the terrorists? Furious Erdogan tells the US to choose between Turkey and Syrian Kurds. You see, Erdogan had now decided that, well, Assad was going to survive after all, despite everything that they could throw at the situation. And because of, pivotally, the intervention of the Russians, um, he'd figured that, okay, that wasn't going to wash. And a deal had to be done, and, and he began doing a deal. But the problem is that the United States wants to create another Israel in the Middle East. And uh, this time it's to be a Kurdish enclave, taking a little piece out of Turkey, a little piece out of Syria, a little piece out of Iraq, and acting as a center of influence in the region 
for uh, US policy. Now, you know, Erdogan needs that for his greater Turkey project and planning on being a leading force in the region like he needs a hole in the head. And this is the reason why this particularly stormy um, reaction to a meeting between a US official and some of the Kurdish People's Protection Unit, the YPG, uh, which is active on the ground in Syria. The backstory on this, for those of you not following, is it's got nothing to do with ISIS at the moment. It's all got to do with who can defeat the inverted commas terrorists and get as much territory as possible before this war is over because it's heading for being over. So that's the background. And that's the reason for the coup. Because um, Erdogan didn't just threaten like that. When it became quite clear that the United States was saying, and I suppose a bad idea, to say to the New World Order, listen, it's either me or the terrorists. <laughs> I could have told you what the answer was going to be there, Mr. Erdogan. Um, you know, it's despite the fact that they hate the terrorists, <laughs> it's always going to be the terrorists they choose, you know. So that's the motivation, so to speak. But something happened between the planning and the delivery on this coup. And uh, let me bring up from Sputnik News uh, a story that hours before the military coup attempt, Turkey was warned by Russia. Now, this story appeared also in uh, Iranian media, and it was carried on uh, the uh, Russian uh, task service. So uh, another example of this information, this pre-intelligence breakdown. Um, Turkish intel informed top generals hours before coup attempt, says army. So clearly somebody was onto something. And now let's get to the really meaty part. Erdogan's former chief military advisor arrested over failed military coup, Colonel Ali Yazisi. <laughs> Well, well, well. So intelligence breakdown in terms of the ability to conceal the oncoming coup. Uh, a warning by Russian intelligence of an imminent coup. And subsequent to the coup, as well as the wholesale arrests which have been going on, arrests of key individuals, including Erdogan's former chief military advisor. Now, somebody just cleaned house. Is Erdogan taking advantage of this situation to advance his own interests? Of course he is. Is he using it to crack down on the left? Yes, of course he is. Are there worse things than a dictator like Erdogan? Of course there are. Ask the people of Libya. Ask the people of Syria. Ask the people of Iraq. You know, it's the MO of the New World Order is getting rid of guys like Erdogan when it suits them and turning their countries into chaotic war zones. You know, what better way to destroy the EU and Russia and China and the whole, you know, Silk Road project, which is underway as the rest of the world carves an independent route from the United States and the New World Order. So, that's what was going on. And I do believe that the Gullenist network of uh, agents, which was being uh, utilized by the CIA, had uh, a sort of outer layer uh, of people thinking they're Gullenists and advancing, uh, you know, Gullenist objectives to uh, overthrow Erdogan. But at the same time, within that, uh, an inner intelligence core, uh, which was a CIA intelligence operation within Turkey, and uh, which uh, Colonel Ali Yazisi uh, may have been involved with, uh, not directly, but indirectly, uh, through various contacts. Now, there is word going around, as I say, that the Russians tipped off Erdogan. And I is that credible? I believe something is credible, but not necessarily that. Um, this is possibly a, uh, a cover story. According to these reports, um, Russian army intercepted Turkish military communications that indicated a coup was being organized, according to Fars News uh, in Iran. And as a result of that, now, Russian signals intelligence is very, very good. I mean, one of the reasons for the debacle in the Ukraine, 
where despite stirring up all that trouble, they've been unable to actually get a war going, um, is that uh, infamously we had Victoria Newland, another neocon like Hillary, um, her conversation where she said, F U K the EU, uh, or Fluck the EU, um, that was bugged. And her comments were broadcast worldwide. Now, you know, it's a bit difficult to try and present an image that you're out there working for peace and harmony <laughs> all around the globe uh, when you're acting like that. And that was penetration by Russian signals intelligence who were capable of picking that up. You know, what I'm talking about here now is operational failures in the New World Order system, serious ones. So, um, I believe then that on top of that, that there was also, um, you know, an intelligence success there. That the coup was predictable as Erdogan began to make these moves and uh, could have been anticipated. And certainly um, there was about a month before the um, coup, there was a meeting where Erdogan uh, apologized for the shooting down in November 2015. You remember that? Of a, a Russian plane. Now, since then, the two uh, airmen who who were involved in that mission that shot down the plane have been arrested. <laughs> and uh, there's every indication that that was a, a deliberately staged provocation designed to sour relations between Russia and Turkey. And uh, uh, Erdogan was apologizing a month beforehand to Putin. What was he apologizing just to make nice with Putin because the real politic indicated he had to work with him now that Assad wasn't going down? Or was there also a subtext that in fact, either directly or indirectly, Russian and Turkish intelligence loyal to Erdogan were in communication with each other already and Erdogan had already been briefed that of course there was an explanation for that shoot down and that he could happily apologize away because it was a stunt pulled by moles inside his own government. And I believe it could be as far back as then or before that, that Erdogan was aware of the developing coup. <laughs> you know, this is a wily guy. Uh, Kentus has a, a portrait of him. And uh, let's just move away. Uh, Kentus on the forum on breakfornews.com has a, a treatment which he, uh, his usual stunning treatments he does of different individuals. And this is Erdogan. Now, so we have Hillary Clinton here also uh, from Kentus, that graphic, graphic image, um, and Erdogan. So uh, I'm telling you, this guy Erdogan is as uh, clever as a snake as I think you can clearly see. So uh, that's the kind of stuff that was going on in the hours uh, when all of this stuff was, was happening in Turkey. Now to prove that in fact we're all on the right page here and that I'm right in saying this was a CIA coup attempt, we just, just look at the fallout and that's all the proof you need. Uh, so here we are on the 19th of July, a few days later. Erdogan, Turkey, ready to restore regional peace together with Iran and Russia. After a telephone conversation with Hassan Rouhani, the Iranian president. And uh, let's take a look at another one. Oh, that's another uh, warned about the coup. Uh, on US news, they were wondering, will Turkey's failed coup push Erdogan towards Iran and Russia? Will it? <laughs> Talk about being behind the times and ill-informed. Let's move to Press TV, where you'll also find another analysis of uh, post-coup situation. Erdogan realigning with Russia following coup attempt, says analysts. And you'll find a number of those stories out there. And he is. I mean, so that where, where does that leave us all? Well, it leaves uh, a bit of a wrench thrown in Uncle Sam's pivot as has been pointed out by uh, Mike Whitney on uh, an article about the, the Turkey coup, that the idea of um, being able to stop what's happening in the Middle East and with China and with Russia 
um, it looks like that that is is seriously damaged now. So let's look. There's a pivotal role played by Turkey, and without Turkey, no ISIS thing with Syria, right? So Turkey has been central to NATO's plans, has been central to uh, the New World Order's uh, uh, Empire of Chaos disruption uh, plans. And yet, you know, when he told them to back off that, that he wasn't having a CIA-sponsored enclave of Kurds, um, and they didn't, he acted. And uh, now, I mean, there was a, for example... There was a search of the nuclear base, NATO's nuclear base in Turkey, after the coup, and uh, a number of officers who were in the uh, base were arrested. Uh, the power was also cut off to the NATO nuclear base. Of course, it had its own independent power supply, but, you know, this is as serious as it gets. So, as uh, Mike Whitney said, what if Erdogan decides it's no longer in Turkey's interest to provide the U.S. with access to the base? or that he would allow Russian bombers and fighters to use the base. According to some reports, this is already in the works. More importantly, what happens to US plans to pivot to Asia if the crucial land bridge that connects Europe and Asia breaks with Washington and joins the coalition of Central Asian states that are building a new free trade zone beyond Uncle Sam's suffocating grip? Uh -huh. What indeed? And where does that leave Hillary Clinton and the New World Order? You know, um, it's easy when you're on top and when you have all the resources and the propaganda and all the rest of it behind you and you can control events. But sometimes you come up against, and these politicians do exist, guys whose determination and instinct for self-preservation is just so strong that it's almost impossible to defeat them. And it may very well be that such an individual has, not as part of some huge block really, but rather on his own, managed to defeat the New World Order. Now, that does change things. And as I say, not the first defeat but one of many. They're just coming one after the other now. And you can only sustain defeats like that for so long before your credibility is is damaged and your operational effectiveness certainly been questioned. I'm questioning it now. How do they get penetrated so badly? How did they not even see it coming that he was on to them? So... That's the state of the New World Order, folks. Despite all the hoopla about Hillary Clinton, the reality is a little bit different. All right, uh, maybe we'll leave it at that. I, I don't need to say much more. And this was just a brief audio because I had to talk about Hillary's tragic failure in Turkey, as I say, because nobody else is. But that's what we do. All right. That's it for this edition of The Beautiful Truth, and I will be back with more very soon. I do hope you can join me for that. But in the meantime, for breakfornews.com, this has been Fenton Dunn reporting.